Well, <clears throat> the Sharks uh, unfortunately fall to the New Jersey Devils 3-2 to two in overtime. And, uh, you know, I, I think I was going to start a little bit of this cast uh, on a positive note. Uh, but then that third period happened. <laughs> well, I guess we'll let this intro happen. We'll see you after the break. But first, if you want to be a part of the show, teal together and interact with us, chat with us on all of the social media platforms we are on, which includes Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Reddit, and of course all the shenanigans that goes down in the Discord. Find everything else, all of your Sharks content you need and desire on tealtownusa.com. <laughs> I am uh, joined by my co-host, uh ian blogs hockey ian how are you doing this evening i'm good I, I i think all things considered i'm good um a lot has happened in the last couple of days um none of it good but uh you know still standing yeah yeah i mean and we will get to get to a little bit of the uh, sharks news i think off the hop uh, william eckland uh was returned uh to the swedish elite league um, and uh, that was in order to keep his entry level uh, first year intact. Uh, mm -hmm. The Sharks management decided to uh, place him back in his home team for one more year of <clears throat> development. And I think a lot of it had to do with the physical and uh, the, the physical toll and impact that's going to be on him uh, in the NHL. Ian. Yeah, I think I think something that, you know, you do definitely get worried about is the rookie wall. And you see a lot of guys hit it really hard, um, usually about halfway through the season. You know, some of the sometimes rookies, they kind of just they get gassed and they look lost. And I think the Sharks were worried that at some point, you know, Eklund would hit that wall. Uh, and then, it you know, it's hard because it's, guys get frustrated now, I think there's been a lot said. I've said a lot on Twitter, too. Um, but just uh, briefly, my thoughts here. I think that, like, I don't like the move. I understand the move. And I don't think it's going to, like, most importantly, it's not going to hurt him. He's going to come back hungrier next year, probably with another 5, 10 pounds. And I think he's, you know, he's going to be in a better place. Um I, I liked Eklund's play. I thought Eklund looked, he never, to me, looked out of place. There was a cup. there was like, I think, one game, the one before he got sat, where his line did definitely get worked a little bit. Um, and then he sat for a game, and then he came back, and he was better. But, like, overall, like, I know he's small, but, like, again, like, I think this small thing is something that's been, oh, he's kind of small, but that's been really overblown. Like, his ability to see the ice like his vision and his awareness really negated the size issue like did we never saw and granted it's a small sample size of nine games but we never saw Eklund get just destroyed into the boards because he never put himself in a position to get destroyed in the boards right right so I mean I understand and I think look it I think a lot of the anger about Eklund being sent back is because it was like one of the few good things we have this year, right? Like with everything that's gone on with this team in the last year, like selfishly, I, you know, I like that I had this one thing that regardless of how things went, I was excited about. And I think that's what it is for a lot of people. Yeah, and I think the excitement was a really good bright spot with all of the, uh, you know, the drama that was uh, in the off season, and um, you know, I think I'm left wondering, okay, if you're sending en Eklund back, does that have any bearing on what they're gonna do with Kane? Does that mean that, you know? God, I try not. I I don't want to even think about that, right? Like yeah. I. I really don't want to think about that me. because yeah, that's oh, and, and it's the cynic yeah. in me too. Like the the cynic in me, like until they come out and say Kane's not playing this year, which they you know they they haven't come out and said anything one way or the other, of course, right? right. And until they they come out and actually say something, I expect him to be back. 
I don't want him to be back, but I expect him to be back because that's the cynic in me, right? Like I just, yeah. I don't, I, I don't think there's too much to read into it. I think, you know, sent, I mean, he could have, they could have sent him to the world juniors from the NHL club. It's not like being on the NHL club would preclude him from the world juniors teams have sent guys to the world juniors from the NHL club before right. knowing that it's, it's a good experience for them. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think like because of the, you know, because of the, the world juniors and it being an Olympic year, and I think he'd be a long shot to make the Olympic team, but he might, you know, if he starts lighting it up over in Sweden, they might take a look at him for, you know, for an extra guy. Yeah. Yeah. And especially, I, and... especially if the NHL pulls out, which I don't think is going to happen, but it is a possibility. Right. And if the NHL pulls out of the, the Olympics, is does is William Eklund on the Olympic team? I think you would definitely be in the conversation with no NHLers there. Yeah, I I agree, I agree. Well, I think it's time to break down the game, and uh, unfortunately, that decision by DW affect you know directly affects the Sharks and and the roster that was put out. So in that first period, it seemed uh, very much like it was a, a probative kind of feel, especially at the very at, at the beginning the the teams i think both kind of had some sloppy neutral zone play especially at the beginning and then you started to see the sharks build a little bit of momentum um and then i felt that the the momentum kind of died like about halfway through that period and you know really at the end of the first i thought new jersey started to come on and and yeah what did you see out of that out of that first i i mean i pretty much agree with you i think that This is a team like the Sharks. The Sharks are a team that have a lot of guys playing ahead of where they should be playing. Right. Because of obviously like, again, it shouldn't be like the Sharks are still missing big pieces. Right. Big giant pieces are missing from this team. And I think you can. You can weather that storm for a while, but eventually like the NHL, the the speed of the NHL game is the fastest game right and it's the fastest game in the world and like I think it's we're still starting faster to hit that, than the ahl right and i think we're starting to hit that that rookie wall a little bit you know how you had alluded to a little bit more and, and i think some of these young players i think we are starting to see a little bit of, of, of the wall and i think the other thing too is elevating a guy like like bolsters and um barabanov you know into the you know into the second line Mm-hmm. Um, I think and and asking them to shoulder you know maybe a bigger load than you know what is normal for them I think is also having an effect on the team. See, and that's not where I would look. I would look on the blue line where I think that the impact is being because again, look at you have you have Burns and Ferraro, and I think Merkley had a good game, but and I, and Hataka had looked okay in this game too. But you know, again, like I think that's where. The, the problem that the Sharks have had is that low cycle this year. Right. And I think that's only been that's only been magnified uh, in the last couple of games, I feel. I mean, you know, I think Merkley had a decent game. I you thought know, he had was, a good game. Like he had a I rough shift one, in the third period yeah. that really he had a rough shift in the third period. And I, I think. For a lot of his detractors, they're going to be, oh, well, that's the Merkley that we know. But like he had a he had a good game up until that point. Now, obviously, look at you want guys to have good game, complete games. You want the team to have good, complete games, and and that obviously didn't happen tonight. But I don't think like Merkley's looked out of place on the NHL roster. Like I don't, I, I don't, I wouldn't lay this at his feet. No, no. And, and uh, Grayson Hendricks, uh, thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Uh, is it dumb of me to be cautiously optimistic about a healthy version of this team? I love the young guys, but man, I miss the big names. Well, I think we all are. And I think like we had alluded to a little bit before that, uh, you know, because of, you know, uh, Eklund going back to the SHL, you've, you've depleted a little bit more talent. And I think you're really starting to see where the the wall, you know, that wall of, of mm-hmm. it's just you can't replace a, a, an Eklund. You can't replace a, a Carlson. You can't replace no. a Timo. So 
again, I think we've talked about how other, you know, how other cast of characters are being elevated into the lineup. And again, maybe shouldering a, a little bit more of a load than they should. And, and Ian had, um, you know, alluded to the play of Brent Burns and Mario Ferraro. And mm-hmm. those two tonight uh, logged, <laughs> you know, 30, 29 and 31, 12, you know, each, yeah. you know, respectively. Yeah, and it's not ideal. It's not ideal. And and I think, again, it, you start to see really in that latter half of the second and the latter half of the third, they, you know, they're they're running out of gas. <laughs> you yeah. Know, essentially, uh, they get a little bit slower and. Um, I think I I think I like I mean, for the most part, I've liked how the teams played this year. So I think that being healthy, like I think there is a reason for some cautious optimism there. I think that considering the like, again, you look at the guys that they've been forced to put out on the ice. I think they've done pretty well for themselves. Like, yeah, I'm disappointed by tonight. I think that. You know, they probably needed to push a play against a team that went into that played a game last night that also went into overtime. Right. And you you probably want to see a better push in the third. Right. This is disappointing. I'm not mad at this game by any stretch of the imagination. I'm disappointed. But like I haven't again, like I I keep saying this, but it's but it's true. There's not really I haven't really been mad at this team this year. Even I. I went back and I watched the St. Louis game because I couldn't watch that one because I had to work really early in the morning. And as you all know, I'm on the Eastern, uh, on the Eastern time zone. So late start, early morning, not a good, not a, not a good combination. Uh, when I have to be up at five. So, um, and you know, even that game again, you know, disappointed, I thought given, given all things considered, I, I didn't think the St. Louis game was a disaster. I think there was a couple of goals that Hill probably would want it back, but uh, you know, and same thing tonight. Like, yeah, there's things that you would like to see executed better or things that you would like to see more of. But I still don't I haven't been angry at this team this year. And this game hasn't changed that. I think if we start having games like this once the roster is healthy, then, yeah, then, you know, maybe the anger will start to seep. I mean, it's only going to be a matter of time. The anger will seep in eventually this season. Right. But I think, again, all things considered, not their best game tonight, but it's hard to be mad. Yeah. And, and maybe mad wasn't the word that I was looking for, but I am a little disappointed in that third period. And let's, let's quickly go over the, um, the shots on goal after the first was 10 to nine in favor of the New Jersey devils. Um, And then going into that second period, we started to get a little bit of the trickle of offense coming in Um, and, and really breaking the ice is, is Rudolph Balser's, He's, uh, you know, going to the net really hard. You've got a beautiful setup on the blue line from Brent Burns. He passes over to Mario Ferraro. Mario then puts the shot on goal and, you know, Rudy's uh, crashing the net and is able to get that in. And just a really good bang, bang play, you know, yeah. getting that and getting that puck to the net and, and, and crashing. Yeah, and Balser is finally breaking through, and it's only and I kept you know, and this is something that I've been kind of beating the drum for a while. It's only going to be a matter of time once he breaks through. Hopefully, he'll continue. And even that shootout attempt, like you could say, well, why did they send Balser's out in the shootout? But I think you know, again, he hit the post. He beat the goalie. If he puts that puck an inch the other direction, it's in the net. No, I thought so. Balser it's hard to get good, mad. No, I thought he had a good game tonight. Um, you know, and that's the thing with Balser's. Like, I feel like. You know, this is a guy who, yeah, hasn't had the finishing, and that's obviously a problem, but he's always in the right spot. Like, he he's had all these great A chances. Why? Because he's in the right spot. Yeah, obviously, we want to see him finish more, but I think he's been he's been really good um, in the position where they played him, and I've, I, well, I've always been a big fan tonight. of Rudy Balsers. Yeah, I've, yeah I mean, and I've always he, he been a fan of Rudy Balsers. Yeah, like, he led the forwards and shots tonight, and... and... Honestly, that was a guy that they're asking a little bit more of, and and I think he stepped up to the plate. And I think, like you had said, his positioning is good. I think a little bit more of the finish, which will come in time. I think when he gets a little bit more adjusted to, you know, his line mates. Um, but yeah, I I think I don't have any problems with with the way in which Balsers was playing tonight. Um, no, you know, again, like the only the only issue with Balsers is you want to see him finish more. And hopefully now that he's broken through, 
his confidence goes up and, you know, and he starts burying a few more because, again, he's a guy who's always in the right spot. Like, you don't get grade A chances if you suck at the game. (laughs) <laughs> well, you heard it here, folks. You heard it here first, folks. Uh, you don't get goals if you suck at the game. <laughs> well, I'm, but like a lot of people like no, get in, you. get on me in my mentions because I, I, you know, I see, and they're like, oh, he's not even an NHL player. Like, well, you know, he's obviously doing something right because you don't get grade A opportunities if you can't, you know, if your skates are made of lead and you don't have any hands. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, then uh, unfortunately. You know the Sharks, um, in that in that second period, give up the lead and and they give it up about twelve minutes later. It's uh, Ryan Graves um, from Nico Heischer and uh, Michael McLeod, and I mean, what do you what do you see in here? I think it was one of the one of the rare defensive breakdowns that the Sharks had. I think it was just happened to be a you know a puck that wasn't cleared. Um, you know the the. Um, the the devils really had swarmed over in oh by Reimer and and I mm-hmm. think a, again it was just kind of the right place right time to to put in some trash into the net but I again you got to make that clear um, and that's one of those you know those one of those times where it's like okay this is where the the youth you're starting to see a little bit of the youthfulness right for um, sure and, and I think that you're gonna have those moments where mentally you know we see the effort but i think a little bit of the mental brain farts will happen and i think this is one of those growing goals it was definitely a breakdown i mean i and i mean credit to james reimer who like looked like he got a piece of it with his blocker like if he gets his blocker down a little quicker like that's like we see that save on highlight reels at the end of the year right um so i mean you can't fault reimer there at all um but yeah i mean obviously you'd want to see again, you know, this is where, you know, New Jersey kind of was controlling the pace. And at this, when you're getting to this point in the game, that would be where you'd hope to see the sharks would kind of take advantage of the fact that the, the devils had played last night. And I think that was kind of the start of kind of the rest of the game where the warning signs were all there. Yeah. I I think you're, you're absolutely right. So they end up uh, with that, at that period, I think the shots on goal ends up being seven to nine in favor of the Sharks. The Sharks look like they carried a little bit of the territorial advantage, but really, as the as the second went on, I thought New Jersey kind of came on, and that goal kind of mm-hmm. suggested it. So going into and that, even still, but even still, like even when New Jersey kind of turned it on there, the Sharks did a really good job of keeping the shots to the outside. Yes, yes, because there was a flurry right at the end where I thought that James Reimer really held them in and. You know, was really good with the rebounds. I thought for the most part that they were getting out to those rebounds and clearing them out. Every once in a while, though, they they when they made a mistake, it got capitalized on. And I think the two goals that they, you know, that they allowed tonight was direct result from you know you know those missed uh, executions. So going into mm-hmm. the third period, uh, Jonathan Dolan on the power play uh, again. Brent Burns and Nick Merkley on the assists. So that would be a two assist night for Brent Burns um I I mean Jonathan Dolan is is exactly posting up where he needs to be um Mm -hmm. you know he's got a really good wrist shot and he's tied for the rookie leading goals I mean where where do we think you know his ceiling is gonna be Ian I mean do we think he's gonna I don't know like I was really skeptical when he came over like like Jonathan Dolan's a player that I've gone up and down on a lot um, I thought when we first acquired him, I was really excited because I thought at that time he was one of the best players not playing in North America. And then when he did come over, it didn't really go very well for him. And um, and so I was skeptical when, the, you know, when they signed him and he was going to come over this year. Because I think, you know, I think there was good reason for skepticism. But honestly, like, I'm happy to be wrong here. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And as far as like, where's the ceiling? I don't know because he's not like a player who's kind of gone down the road. He's gone like coming from the Svenskin, like that generally doesn't translate to NHL, you know, NHL success. So I, I have no idea. I'm just going to enjoy the ride. Honestly, I'm tired of trying to make sense of this guy. <laughs> I'm just going to enjoy the ride. Yeah, no, I think, I think you're absolutely right. And, and I think for me, at least he's got that poise of a veteran. 
and and, yeah. and that's what I thought was lacking from his game when he was in the A. And now it seems like that year over there really, you know, really helped him in understanding, you know, where he's his positioning. I think is just so much better than than it was prior to, um, you know, that that uh, year overseas. So I, mm-hmm. I'm really excited um, to see what else Dolan can do, and I, I hope that he continues to uh, really play well. And you know, when when Eklund gets back up next year, you know, hopefully this will be a guy that they can pair together and have, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not bottom. like, again, I, Eklund's going to come back and he's going to be fine. He's going to be better. And I think I, he's going to be great. Like he's, he's, he has all the tools. We saw all the tools. It's just, it's now it's putting them all together and just getting better. Uh, and you know, again, like it's just one of those things where he's just going to get better with experience regardless of where that is. I, the only thing that really bugs me, though, is like even though the the Barracuda are an absolute tire fire, and maybe that's not where I want them, but like the only the real ice. scratch my head is yeah, like don't you want him playing the North American game and not yep. the European game? Yep. But he did have the Euro clause, so there is that. Yeah, uh, and Mikey, I think is is bringing up a great point because we saw a little bit of that fatigue set in in that second mm-hmm. period. Who are the Sharks missing the most right now? And, and to me, I think Eric it's Timo. Carlson. Yeah, well, oh. Timo, okay. I will say Eric Carlson because Eric Carlson would munch a lot of minutes that would take some minutes off of, like, yes, Timo Meyer too. Like, it's it's hard. Like, I would say between the two of them because they need a minute. They need another minute muncher. And on they the need blue a score. For sure. <laughs> and they need a score. And so I, I think it's. I, I think you could make a very compelling argument between uh, Carlson and Timo Meyer. I, I think you make a, a very compelling argument both ways. Yeah. Uh, we've got to quickly, we've got some uh, quotes coming in from the locker room. Thank you, AJ. As always, he is manning the Zoom calls and always getting us some really good snippets. Uh, okay, right here. Here's the first one. Uh, Lindy played his top guys a lot tonight, and I thought we did well against it. Um, I, again, I think that kind of echoes similar to what we had said. Um, you know, they it seemed like through the first, I, I think they were double shifting some guys in that first period, and, and I think that they kind of sensed the Sharks were a little bit on their heels. And, yeah. and it was one of those things where sometimes when you're playing a back-to-back, the uh, the team that played that back to back is already kind of in go mode. You know what I mean? They've yeah. kind of already got the legs at the beginning, and and I think it kind of bears out in the shots on goal in that in that uh, beginning of the first. Uh, here's the next. The uh, the PK has been great. Madden has done well blending in all the guys on the back end. Malash has done good. Hataka, it's been solid. Uh, okay. Yeah, I really like Hataka. Yeah, Hataka. I don't know how to say it right. Am I saying it right? I don't know. I think it's Hataka. Hataka. Yeah, I think it's Hataka. 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 Yeah, because it's Finn, right? So it's going to be some weird reflection there. Oh, uh, Jerry F., thank you so much for the Venmo. Of course, if you want to uh, donate via the Venmo, we appreciate it uh, that way. Uh, that way, the uh, YouTubes don't take a cut. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, of course, you can always find us at... Uh, at Teal Town USA. So uh, either way, we would really appreciate it. Uh, letting Reimer go is always a conversation. We have a couple of days before we have to make that decision. I'm sure he wants to play. Um, you know, Reimer looked really good tonight. I think we both had some. Reimer's that. been the better goalie so far. Yeah. Like, I know I know Hill's the guy they, they think is the, going to be the guy going forward. But I, again, like, I don't think, I think the worst thing they could do right now is decide who's the starter. And I think they should just keep doing what they're doing. And it's, and maybe you give Hill a chance again, cause I, I, I still kind of stick with the win and you're in. And I, it's hard to, it's hard to say no to Reimer though, after this game. Cause I thought Reimer deserved better than the, this outcome. Uh, here's a, here's a kind of interesting one. Uh, the, the disappointment in the room is the guys feel like they should have had all the points at home. It's a credit to the commitment. Is that a subtle jab at maybe the commitment wasn't there last year? Yeah, I think. I I mean, last year was such a tire fire, right? Right. I I mean, it's hard too because like McLean wasn't here last year, so. But I think it speaks to the the team this year. Like again, this is a team where last year I spent 
many games in a row being angry at this team. And this year, I mean, the results have been decent. They haven't been amazing. Growth. But I think growth, yet positive growth. Really angry at them. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, finally, the credit goes to the veteran leadership playing the right way. The CUDA guys went to play the right way, want to play the right way too. It's systematic. So I believe that that was in context of bringing up more of the younger guys and having them integrated into the system very For sure. quickly. Uh, so into that third period, like I said, uh, Jonathan Dolan. And then unfortunately, 1704 into the third, uh, Yanni. K- K- oh my goodness. Ku. Kukkonen, Kukkonen, um, from Colton White and Jimmy VC tying it up, and this is the this is the Nick Merkley reference that we that we had uh, teased out just a little bit. Uh, Nick mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately gets gets the puck and just doesn't get enough of his body kind of on his stick side, and and unfortunately it's it's kind of a weaker play because he's kind of tipping the other way. Um, not a lot he can do there besides maybe hustle just that little bit more. Um, but, but again, I think like Ian had said, he had been most of the night been in defensively in good position. Um, I, I, even he was in the right spot. He just didn't, he did. He should have made the, the simple a little play. off, a little off balance too. Yeah. Like make the, make the simple play, just get rid of it. Right. But I, I think like. And, and, you know, but I like there's a lot of pressure. And I think like the, the Devils had a lot of pressure just overall. Uh, so I think like it looked really like it was going to break. The, the dam was going to break. Yeah. yeah, right. Like, exactly. Like, so I know it's going to be easy for his detractors to just completely lay that at Merkley's feet and be like, yeah, he's just he sucks. But I, I think, yeah, you know, should he have gotten rid of it? Like he should have made a quicker decision as to what the heck he was going to do with the puck. I agree 110% with that, but that's going to come with time. Like he's going to, you know, you can't get experience, NHL experience without playing NHL games. So I think uh, it's something that, you know, he's probably, if he could do it over again, would do something different, but it is what it is. Uh, Thank you, Laurel. As always, she is really the, uh, (laughs) the heart and soul of that chat. If you're enjoying the show, please take the time to hit the like and the subscribe again. uh, The more subscribes we get, the better the content we can get to you. And uh, again, we really appreciate all of the love and support that everybody provides for us. Uh, Okay. So uh, at the end of that third period, I think that there was a little bit of a back and forth. I think at the, by the final four minutes, um, you know, Jersey had really poured it on, started to really pour it on. And then I think maybe about a minute and 30 left, the Sharks looked like they had a little bit of a flurry to try and, and get the final goal. Um, and, you know, they end up getting into the, um, I think it was the defensive zone. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, the, the game ended up going to overtime. Um, but, I think we saw some good signs that they were pushing back after, you know, after the goal was scored. And again, some good, some good growth signs to me, um, you know, weren't quitting on, on the game. And I, I think they played a little bit of a shell in the final 10 minutes of that third. And I would have, liked yeah, them. well, it, it, what didn't help too was that like the sharks took a really stupid penalty yeah. late in the game too. Right. And the guy, I, I feel like after that, after from that PK on, it was pretty much all downhill. Yeah, yeah, and then they end up going into overtime. Uh, the overtime, you know, had some some good uh, back and forth action. I thought both teams had carried the play pretty evenly throughout that. Um, you know, throughout I think that, the that only overtime. Thing... Yeah, go sorry, ahead. I apologize for uh, that. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm yawning at 1:45 in the morning. Um, <laughs> I, I think the only thing in that overtime that I didn't like was a lot of just like the individual drives to the net mm. instead of looking for because like the NHL, you want to make the goalie move, right? And you have a lot of space there, but it was just a lot of just driving it right to the net and trying to, po- you know, shove the puck through through the goaltender. I'd like to have seen a little more. You know, trying to get the goalie move, maybe a, maybe a pass or two more instead of just like skate around with it in your defensive zone, trying to look for the perfect outlet and then just driving right to the net with one guy. Right, right. And, and I it, think that's the only 
ripe I would have had in that, in until, that the en- until the end of the overtime when I felt that they kind of all kind of came down to the net um, you know, as a, as a cohesive unit. But I agree. I think there was a lot of one and done and, you know, trying to individual one hand it. I think yeah. we saw Rudy Bolsters do it. Um, I think we saw Hurdle do it as we well. We did it a couple times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have an, a- we have an AJ mention. Uh, when was the last time AJ was on? Uh, I think, uh, unfortunately the, Sunday. the, yeah, the scheduling for AJ is that he's doing pucknologists and he's rarely on the after darks. Um, he's, but he's on the do- calls. Like here's the thing you have to remember, right? Like he's, he's the one getting all the quotes from the, from the locker room and everything else but if you miss aj uh he is on every sunday at seven yeah and if there is a sharks game that falls on a sunday uh you get the uh pucknologist takeover so yep. <laughs> you know it also please go ahead and uh check them out on the pucknologist again at 7 p.m pacific and they will comment on all that was in the week of the sharks so going into that shootout, Logan Couture with the first shootout goal, uh, Jesper Bratt. Oh, that that shootout okay. goal! It was it was just oh, Reimer almost had that one, and uh, just squeaks through with. I, I don't know if it was just because of a, <clears throat> excuse me, a very heavy shot with the momentum. <clears throat> excuse me. I think it had a spin, like just yeah. kind of like a backspin on it almost. It, yeah, it's a it tough. A tough, uh, a tough thing for Reimer, right? Where he just kind of he, he get just a piece of it, but not enough to like to stop the momentum, and it kind of just slides in. But it was it was a really good move. Yeah. Um, and I really like. Uh, I'm not gonna get on a goalie in the shootout. Shootouts. It's just, a crap shoot. It, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's a crap shoot. And, you know, and and then uh, Rudy Balsers uh, misses. I think he hits a goal post. You know, the Sharks hit three goal posts, four goal posts tonight. Four goal posts, yeah. And uh, you know, could have been the difference in the in in the game. And and I thought you know that they their shot selection was was decent. So yeah, I mean, it, I thought Balsers again had a hell of a move. Like I would have probably, I would have probably. And maybe this is just because of the benefit of hindsight. I probably would have put Dolan in that spot and had, but I mean, you can't argue with with Couture and Hurdle taking the shot. So yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe with the benefit of hindsight, maybe I have Dolan shooting the shootout in in that second slot. But you can't really be mad. Like again, shootouts, kind of, you know, shootouts a crapshoot. And even like, but Balser's made a, a good move. Like I thought his move yeah, was I mean, better than Hurdle. Yeah, he beat the goalie. He just didn't beat the post. So. Yeah. yeah. Again, good move. Unfortunately, just couldn't cash it in. Uh, then Alexander Holtz is um, denied by James Reimer. Uh, and again, like we had said a little bit more, Tomas Hurdle, uh, you know, goes in and unfortunately is unable to make his shot. Then leading the way, David, Damian Severson, you know, just, uh, you know, a, a pick shot. And uh, yeah, really, really nice shot. Really nice yeah. move. Reimer probably a little deep in his net but again it's the shootout i'm not you know i just like if if i had to make an observation i'd say you know maybe a little maybe a little too deep in the in the blue for reimer there he probably want to see him challenge that shot a little bit more but because again the, with the moves that these guys were pulling um you don't want to go too far you don't want to challenge a shooter too much and then get leave a wide out. open net yeah. so get yourself out of position it's kind of a loose the, lose right yeah for the extended you know the extended pull around um, so the uh, at the end of the game, the Devils won three to two. In that shootout, shots on goal ends up being twenty eight twenty seven in favor of the uh, Devils. Faceoffs fifty four percent for the Devils. The Devils go zero for four on the power play. The Sharks fifth re- fifth ranked PK, and I believe probably got a spot with those zero for four. Great great job by the PK Sharks one for mm-hmm. three. Um, thought special teams tonight was was good and in was one of the factors in getting them in that point. Uh, hits 17-22 in favor of the Sharks. Blocks 21-20 uh, in favor of the Devils. And then six giveaways. So one thing that I am noticing, Ian, is that those giveaways are going down. So it's good to see that they are, uh, you know, trending in that right direction. And I think as yep. we get, um, you know, as we get the the veterans and, and uh, the guys back from COVID, I think that that number – hopefully should go down but of course if (laughs) we never know with eric carlson it may go up it may go up (laughs) uh james reimer ends the night with a 929 save percentage making 30 uh, 23 on 
uh, 25 shots. So Reimer. Yeah, just a hell great. of a game by Reimer. Like, yeah. I, Reimer has been super, super, super impressive so far, and I hope that it continues because uh, – and, I, and, I, and, I, and again, like, I'm not uh, – like I don't think Hill had his best game against St. Louis, but I'm not like I, I I'm not against the guy either at this point, right? But I just yeah. feel like right now Reimer is giving you the better chances to win, and that's probably where you go. Sharks, <laughs> this road trip's gonna be uh, gonna be interesting though. Yeah, uh, this road trip's gonna be tough. Um, even especially, I mean, I, I, you have to figure they they got to start getting guys back soon, right? Yeah, and so now the uh, the Sharks are six four and one uh, on the season and pull themselves back into that third slot in the Pacific Division. Uh, but like Ian had said, I think they're going to be hitting hitting the road, and it's going to be yeah, a very going to be pretty. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see you know, where they, you know, end up on it <laughs> um, with, of course, you know, their first game being against the Calgary Flames and uh, don't look now, folks, but they're seven, one and three. They're starting to put the pieces together a little bit and you know how nasty it is to play against the Kachuks, you know, one of the Kachuks. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, no, the uh, the Sharks will play up against the uh, the Flames and it will be a good barometer to see where the team is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what is this? What is this schedule? I want to see this schedule because it's it's going to be murder, isn't it? Well, where is this schedule? <laughs> uh, we've also got uh, coming in reportedly an off day for the boys tomorrow, and I think you kind of you kind of saw that they they needed. I think they're going to need some time off because uh, looked a little fatigued, and I'm at this point I am not <sighs> sure how. Uh, how Brent Burns and Mario Ferraro still have legs at this point. <laughs> but, uh, Ian, you sound like a man who's been mortified by what he's seen. So tell us, what does the schedule look like? So, uh, Tuesday, Calgary, uh, who's been very, very good. 11, Winnipeg. The 11th, Winnipeg. That should be an interesting game. Uh, Colorado hasn't been Colorado last year, but that's still... That offense versus this defense would scare me, although we should start seeing bodies back by that point, I hope to God. Uh, then Minnesota, who's kind of uh, started to come up a little bit, and then again in St. Louis um, before coming back home and playing Washington, Carolina, uh, <laughs> and then some Canadian teams. So, yeah, it's going to be... Uh, that is going to be a, a, an interesting stretch of five games. Uh, they're definitely going to get their work out. They have to work cut out for them. Yeah, I mean, for me at least, I'd I'd love to to you know come away with five points. I think would be a you know would be a victory in my book. Um, again, just trying to um, you know tread water till you get the guys back, and and you know like Ian had said, I think this is going to set up to maybe not in that Calgary game because I think somebody had pointed it out that they still have a fourteen day quarantine or it's up. Ten day, ten day, um, and you have to. Ex uh, Dana pulling this up. Thank you, because the traveling Canada, a lot of guys on COVID protocol will have to go fourteen days after their last positive test. Yes, so that's problematic as well. So definitely won't. So we might not see people until that Colorado, Colorado game. game. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, that's gross. Uh, and then this is uh, Dana following up. Thank you, Dana, so much. Instead mm -hmm. of ten, which is the normal policy, but yeah, um, right. Yeah. Fair very very going to be very very interesting um again she's she kind of bringing up they they think that we're still kind of in a retool and um i i agree i think i tend to agree and i think we we've all kind of said that the that the team we just need to see some good growth steps this year yeah like look at i don't like if they i don't care if they lose games if they if they're engaged and you know, like the efforts there, like the, I, I don't want to lose games to just, you know, beach ball goals and <laughs> non-effort. Like that's where the anger comes Cannot in, right? Stop like beach ball, <laughs> like I, I, that's, that's where I get angry, right? Like if, like, if I'm going to invest my time, don't waste it. That's, that's, that's the deal. It's only I invest game. my Why time. You, you don't waste mad. it. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, like that's that's the, that's the deal right so like as long as again like as long as the you know as long as they play hard yeah 
positive growth. Like, I'm not expecting a Stanley Cup this year. No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm expecting. I just, I just want to see the team play well, and I want to see the young guys take steps, and yeah. you know, and I just want to see. I just want to see them in the game. Like, obviously, look at they're going to have stinkers, and you know, like there, there will be times when we're going to come on here and we'll be, we'll be mad at the team, but I not, happens, not, not so far. It. Yeah, not so far. But not so far. Yeah. Uh, John, John, thank you so much. Five dollars, appreciate it. He's always uh, good job as always, guys, and uh, we appreciate you, John, John. You guys make this what it is. So I think uh, it's time for uh, your favorite uh, segment as my favorite segment. Have the goddamn common courtesy to give him a reach around. It's the NHL reach around for your Saturday, November the sixth. Starting off, we got the Lightning beating the Senators 5-3. to three. Victor Hedman with a power play goal. Jan Ruta. You've also got Steven Stamkos. And uh, you've got Andre Palat and uh, Sorelli scoring for you for the Lightning. And uh, you got Connor Brown, Kachuk, and Shaw for the Senators. Senators now 3-7 yeah. on, the, on the season. Yeah, Senators uh, not – I thought the Senators would be a little bit better, but then I remember they have Matt Murray in that, so maybe not. <laughs> and then, of course, the Lightning. But they should be better. Lightning turning uh, it on. I mean, the Lightning are the Lightning, right? Like, yeah. the Lightning are still really good. Well um, – But I, I thought Ottawa would start – I thought Ottawa would be – again, they're 11 games in. There's, you know, plenty more to go, but I thought they would be a little bit better than this. Like, I didn't – I thought they would be probably where Buffalo is and – I thought they'd be doing what Buffalo's doing, maybe. Well, the battle over in the southeast is very, very interesting. You had the Hurricanes and the Panthers on that next game. Very interesting game with the Panthers beating the Hurricanes 5-2. to two. Panthers are now 10-0-1 on the season. For your Panthers, Duclair, Vetrano, Lundell, Hornquist, and Duclair again in the third. And uh, they look like a juggernaut in that southeast. What are you thinking there? Ian. uh yeah i mean the panthers i think the panthers are a really good team um there's a lot of players that i really like on that team and i think that they are going to continue dominating in the regular season i just want to see what they do in the playoffs especially if they run into tampa again well the islanders look like they're also starting to turn the corner here they're now five two and two on their season with a two nothing win against the jets so Orkin getting the shutout Anders Lee and Brock Nelson with the goals. Good to see the Islanders starting to turn things around after that poor start that they had. Uh, the Red Wings yeah. and the Sabres face off with the Red Wings winning in overtime 4-3. to three. Uh, battle, of, battle of some original six teams that have some some uh, checkered history between each other. <laughs> the uh, Maple Leafs winning against the Boston Bruins 5-2. to two. Tavares, Matthews. Uh, Matthews twice, Tavares again, and then Mitchell Marner. So you've got yeah. Uh, um, Toronto awesome got Matthews. off that putrid start, but they've seemed to have uh, finally kind of got it back together again. And this is this is a team that does this a lot, right? It'll have like yeah. it's such it's such a team like that. Just the ups and downs of this team are just so wild when you consider the talent on the on the roster. Yeah, but when 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 things click, man, they they're a hard team to beat. Bipolar for sure, but uh, don't look now. Awesome Matthews with five goals on the season, and he's starting to piece it back together. Right. <laughs> so yeah, don't look helped. now. <laughs> uh, the Golden Knights uh, beat up on the Canadians five to two. Uh, Pietrangelo, uh, Marchessault, uh, Coglin, Stevenson, and Braden McNabb with your scores from the Golden Knights. Robin Leonard with the win. Uh, the wild yeah, the Montreal Canadiens had a ton of shots in that game and they looked like they were uh, going to run away. And then it just kind of the bottom just fell out. Uh, see, and that's that's the kind of game that would happen last year. And that's what that would like those, that. Those are the types of games that would make us mad. Right. Because like you they the Canadians looked like they had everything going for them. I think they were like two nothing and then everything just fell apart. Uh, the Wild beat the Penguins in a shootout 5-4. Capitals, yep. uh, uh, Capitals fall to the Flyers 2-1. to one. <sighs> Martin Jones with another win. I know. I know. <laughs> Ian, uh, it's, only, it's, it's three games. It's three games. I, I look at... I, um... <laughs> 
that hair certainly looking it's, pretty. It's <laughs> not looking good right now, but I, I you know, again, like, and I, and I, I know I beat up on Martin Jones a lot on this show. Um, I mean, good for him, right? Like taking advantage want, of an opportunity because, I, I, like, I want my head to be bald. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want my head to be bald. Uh, I would like him to, you know, like have a few hot games like he's had, and then completely fall apart like he always does. Uh, that would be ideal at this point. But you know, look at good for him because when he got i was not sure when he was bought out if anyone would take a flyer on martin jones and the flyers did uh, part of fun. uh and he, look at and he's making the most of that opportunity so far like i didn't like with the way the last three seasons in san jose had gone like this is a guy who you thought like does he even play in the nhl again and you know the the flyers which has been historically a goalie graveyard um had picked him up and we're kind of like, okay, what's, what's going to happen. So of course it's going, it's going great. But the flyers have actually been really good this year too. Like, I don't think, um, six, two and two he, quietly. Yeah, good. I mean, Carter Hart's been Carter Hart's, uh, been pretty, been very good for him this year, kind of having a rebound season. And, and when he's needed the night off, Jones has come in and he's played, uh, some of his best hockey. So, uh, credit to the flyers overall. I think they've been a much better team this year. Ian Remenda, anyone? <laughs> uh, the Blue Jackets beat the Avalanche four to two. Avalanche, you know, starting to get a little concerning. They're four, five, and one. They've got some injuries that they've got to weather. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, it's a little, little interesting to see them kind of not. I, I'd say treading water. Uh, going over to the Pacific, the uh, the Coyotes uh, beat the Kraken five to four for their first win of the season. I Although, feel really bad for for the while well, the Kraken. I feel bad for the Kraken just because it sucks to actually be a real expansion team. Um, but the Coyotes, I, I want to pronounce his name right. So the star, the guy who's been starting most of the game for the Coyotes is a rookie. Uh, what's his name here? Vamelka, Carol Vamelka. So this guy came into this game tonight. He hasn't. He's still looking for his first win in the NHL, but. His save percentage coming into this game was 920 for a goalie who hasn't won a game for a team that hasn't, you know, a team that hadn't won a game at this point either. But for a guy who started like that many games sporting a 920 save percentage. So, of course, he starts this game. He gets scored on on his first two shots of goal. Turnier says, nope, that's enough of that. He gets pulled out. His save percentage, I think, has fallen to, I think, 913 now. But, and then, of course, the, the Coyotes come back and win the game. And I just feel really bad for the kid because having it, not winning any games and, and sporting a 920 is something else. Yeah, that it is. But uh, the the hope is still alive for 71 losses. It's still alive. <laughs> uh, going over, uh, finally, uh one of the later games, uh, the Flames beat up on the Rangers six nothing, and like we had said before, the Flames are seven one and three. Sean Monahan, uh, Richardson, Gaudreau, Gaudreau again, Lucic, oh, and, and Kachuk. If you have to see the one goal that Gaudreau scored, it's just stupid, silly. Uh, not not a good night for Sorokin at all. I think uh, I, I don't know if he played the game in Edmonton too, but maybe McDavid broke him after he. <laughs> went through i don't know who he scored on if it was sorokin or or georgie but like yeah those ankles are that, gone <laughs> that that mc after that mcdavid goal i think uh i would hang him be up broken too yeah just hang him up <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done <laughs> uh and then of course the nightcap the sharks falling to the devils three to two in a shootout so i mean okay we're through 11 games and i think we're we're at a good point to kind of dissect because it is the end of the homestand I mean, Ian, 6-4-1 and one in their first 11 games, surprising. And Yeah, I mean, it's better than I. I, I didn't have them pegged that high uh, when uh, before the season started. Um, I also said the Calgary Flames were going to be dog shit before the season started. So, I, I mean, you know, maybe I should uh, stop making preseason prognostications. Stop making preseason bets. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's it. 
<laughs> All right. Well, in case you missed it, uh, check us out everywhere. Uh, you can catch us on oh, all those. Oh, one more thing. One more thing before we go. Uh, no, you get a final say. Okay. <laughs> we're, we, we're just going through the in case you all missed right. it. All right. All right. <laughs> Jumping the gun there. <laughs> uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Store, the YouTube replay. You've got SoundCloud, Spotify, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and, of course, on the interwebs at TealTownUSA.com. Uh, Ian, what are your final thoughts on where the people can find you? Uh, my final thoughts. I, I I don't really have any final thoughts. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share something that I did share uh, on the Twitter machine earlier. Uh, goaltender Ben Gaudreau, who plays for the Sarnia Sting, who are absolute ass, uh, backstop the team to a win tonight, making 36 saves on 38 shots, uh, and his team was outshot 38 to 14. So uh, a good night for uh, Sharks prospect Ben Gagro in the OHL. Is, is his shoulders okay? Because I feel like he got to weigh down uh, there. Either, yeah, I mean, Sarnia is, is not good, and I kind of pray that, like, somebody who wants, like, uh, you know, it's hard to trade a guy like Ben Gaudreau, but um, I think overall, like he's having he's having a rough season. Uh, so it was nice to see him get that uh, that win under his shelf. But he's been like he's been just shelled. Um, so I mean, his overall numbers aren't good, but a but a good game from him tonight. Yeah, and uh, I'm Eric Landy. You can find me at. Eric Landy, E-R-I-K-L-A-N-D-I on all the social media garbage, pumping out content here uh, on the After Darks and, of course, over at Genuine Draft as well. If you haven't checked it out, it's a cool uh, podcast on Bay Area Sports. That is Genuine Draft SF. Check it out. Uh, Well, and uh, I think if I don't butcher this, Ian, let's hopefully Mm -hmm. I can do it. It's uh, keep it real. Keep it teal. Keep it real teal. Thanks, everybody, and have a great one.